um, in her foreclosure case, her basically her affidavit of truth. Yeah. And I'm wondering if someone has issues like that or any other kind of, you know, quote unquote debt collector issue that they could add something like that to um something like the affidavit of truth, which puts them on notice that, you know, they don't have they are no longer immune from their acts. Well, I don't see how we can hook that encyclical up up to what we're doing right now. Uh I, I see there <clears throat> Our enforcement issues. Are there any report where it's had any effect anywhere? That I don't know. Okay. I mean, that I don't. I I haven't. I couldn't even begin to answer that question. Um, so I do know in some of the things that I've worked on, you you threaten their bond, and people kind of tend to jump too. Yep. Yeah, Patrick has mentioned that before, too. <clears throat> okay, well, I've, I've been working on, on this document, and uh, I have I have everything converted to a doc file except the QSIP number and the final facts, and that shouldn't take okay. long. So I should be able to post that soon. Okay, so we got some some new documents. I've I've been kind of I've been out of sync, Tom. I've got some uh, medical issues going on, and so um, I'm trying to get online now to see the new documents. Okay, well, you should have an announcement email uh, okay. from the, from the group, and it's the file is BK. Dash dissolution definitions allegations QSIP. Dissolution. Definition. Allegation. QSIP. Okay. It's actually, four four different things. Okay. Uh, the SIMS number, are those the numbers on, oh, I'm sorry, Patrick, never mind. Go ahead. No. You were saying something, go numbers, ahead. The SIMS numbers, those are the numbers that are represented by, like, the number on the back of the Social Security card where F would be France or G would be United Kingdom? Yep. Yes. Okay. C would be Canada. Some people have C. Is what they're doing is basically they're setting up these offshore trusts mm-hmm. and then turning around and having our funds out of those trusts turn around and buy the bonds back here in this country. Like, oh, see, dirty dogs. Here, in, here, in the, here in Iowa, basically they set up a rural water system. Okay? Mm-hmm. Well... Basically, France is the biggest purchaser of the bonds for those uh, rural water systems. But Mm -hmm. it's not France that is basically the one that's buying them. It's our trust that are being set up over in France. And then basically they're being held by like the Attorney General's office under these charitable trust. That's what Chris came across and found. But they are a secret trust, charitable trust, in this regards. And secret means to conceal, to hide property, to put property where an officer of the law will probably will probably be unable to find it to hide in the place of secrecy. Okay, and see that's what they've done. Especially with uh some of these uh items that basically the state is funding uh in different places, power plants, you name it, different uh, items that the state 
needs to have extra money coming in. They take these items offshore and then turn around, and with our own assets, they're having us buy them, and that's why it looks like uh, all the uh, debt is really owed to uh, these foreign countries. It's not. It's really owed to us. It's our trust that are sitting offshore in these other countries. The vast majority of the debt in this country is owed to we the people, hands down. No ifs, ands, or buts. Hmm. And see, there is no QCIP list converting those first letters on the back of the Social Security card to any Federal Reserve Bank. You find that list, and then I'll believe that that's what that number stands for. It don't. And we have to keep pressure on these guys. (laughs) And when you want to, like your hospital bills or anything like that, you surrender the preference. I've got the definition in the words there, surrender of preference, that came out of Ballantyne's. The yielding by the creditor of a bankrupt, your fictional person, to the trustee in bankruptcy of a conveyance, assignment, lien, transfer, and commerce, which is void or voidable under bank under the Bankruptcy Act as a condition of the allowance of the claim of such creditor. Now, you go to Black's Law first, and in Black's first, it says surrender of a preference. In bankruptcy practice, the surrenderer to the assignee in bankruptcy by a preferred creditor of anything he may have received under the preference and any advantage it gives him, which he must do before he can share in the dividend. You have to surrender that driver's license so that they now can go into the charitable trust and pay the traffic ticket. The same thing for all of these contracts that they have out here. Licenses, titles, all these hidden contracts in this banking, debt banking system scenario that they're operating with. You have to surrender the preference. Then now it is in their hands to settle your claim. These judges are bank surrogate judges. The title of surrogate in the dictionary, in the law dictionary, is the title of a judge who presides in a probate court in certain states of the Union. Surrogate's court, a probate court. Well, basically, that's what all these courts are, is they're surrogate courts. You might want to watch the movie Surrogates with Bruce Willis. 2009 movie. You might watch all the movies that Bruce Willis has been involved with, and you will see that basically they all were trying to tell us something about what is taking place out here. From Die Hard 1, Die Hard 2, Die Hard uh, with a Vengeance, and then Die Hard, uh, uh, I forget what the number four was, and now there's a fifth Die Hard, but then Surrogate, and then the latest one, Red.
And they all are telling you the same thing. Now, you were born. You were tied to your mother by a tender, tendering line called the umbilical cord. To become free, you had to have that umbilical cord cut. Now, in the story about the Trojan horse and Troy, they brought the Trojan horse into Troy with ropes. They tendered the Trojan horse into the city of Troy. And see, that's what we have done. We have tendered and tied ourselves to these contracts, to these certificates of title, to these licenses. We're tendered to them. You cut the tendering lines and basically let them go and you'll be free again. You have to surrender that preference. Now, fast forward to 1935 or whatever when the uh, uh, Wizard of Oz came out and basically at the very end, Dorothy had all her high hopes built upon going back home in the balloon. But the balloon, the tendering lines for the balloons let loose. And the balloon took off without her. Mm -hmm. Did she not still get home? Yes. She was free to wake up then. She was no longer tendered to the system. If she would have got on the balloon she would have still been tendered to the system, to the imaginary world. Because the balloon was in the imaginary world. At least that balloon was. See, this is what you have to do. You have to surrender these. Order to surrender them. You send them to the bankruptcy court. And that court is a surrogate judge. And the surrogates are basically out there, and they're tied into the system. They're the fictions. They cannot do anything except what, basically, they're told to do. You go to Oxford Universal Dictionary or one of the others and get a little better definition of what a surrogate is. But that's what all these items are. And we need to start unplugging these governmental surrogates. that are causing us harm. They're a nuisance. They're working with the bankers. They don't know any different. And just like in the movie there, basically all the surrogates were plugged into the main mother corporation. And when the final, when Bruce Willis finally said no, to the computer, it basically shut down all the surrogates. Now, we've got the third night rule up there, and basically, 
The first night, you are recognized as a stranger. The second night, you are a guest. The third night, you now become a domestic. Well, you need to know what a domestic is. Pertaining or belonging or relating to a home, a domicile, or a place of birth, origin, creation, or transaction. Local as distinguished from foreign. That was out of one of the other dictionaries, and I plugged that one in. Because that's what we are. We're no longer classified as a foreigner when we become a domestic. Now we are tied to the land as an American domestic citizen. We are not one of their United States corporate foreign citizens. And then basically, you need to know how to stand up in these courts, okay? They've been operating in a scheme to defraud us in this whole damn process. Everybody's been out here looking at standing, having the right standing. Well, we also need to look at the opposite of standing, which is to be seated. We have to be seated in our office so that we have the authority. So I think if you study those words, those that will give you a pretty good understanding and then go through that two-page updated document that I had. And I also, see, I put on there that uh, uh, Social Security foreign CINS issued identification security, securities in foreign market. That's the number on the back of your Social Security card. So you've got two items you've got to surrender with that Social Security card. The Social Security number, which is a transmitting number going from your real asset accounts and uh, that's your checking account, basically, and, and then with all these savings accounts, these commercial depository accounts. And since all of this stuff was set up under fictitious endeavors, all the rules about uh, time frame that they try and implement are voidable. They're an abatable uh, nuisance. A nuisance that is not permanent because it can be eliminated. So it's an abatable nuisance. You can abate it. Get a little better understanding, you might look up abate and go through what the definition of it is. See, just don't go by the words that I put out here. Go and look at some of these other words. Because I can guarantee you, you do not know the meaning of every word on that damn document that I just gave you. (laughs) 
you think you know in most cases, but in most cases, you go and look them up, oh, says a little more than what I thought it meant. So, I just wanted to get this out to you. You can take that cover letter. I sent pretty much that same letter out to uh, the my chief judge is the one I had Tom Post up there. I sent it to one of my state judges. I sent it to the attorney general for the state. I sent it to the attorney general for the uh, uh, United States. I sent it to the trustee uh, inspector general for the uh, Justice Department. I to uh, the IRS commissioner, uh, to the CID in care of the IRS commissioner. And uh, I sent it to the Treasury Inspector General. I sent it to uh, the FBI, to Interpol in the Justice Department. I think there was somebody else I sent it to, but I... Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be sending it out to the Postmaster General uh, and to his inspector, to uh, the Secret Service, and I'm putting an E on secret hmm. because they're they're operating in a secret capacity out here, deceiving the people from our true assets. Under that enterprise financial man system. We have to keep upon these guys, okay? But if you have a hospital bill or something like that, you take a copy of that certificate of uh, live birth and you surrender it to that hospital. That's what one guy up in Michigan did. You sign it over to them. You surrender it to them to pay the bill. They will go and take it to the bankruptcy. Now, some of these local yokels may not know that, but basically, you tell them, take it to the damn court, to the bar, surrogate, judge. Or... Tell them to take it to the Attorney General's office. Because the Attorney General is basically sitting over these accounts, these charitable trusts. He's a trustee. So you've got several different avenues to go about getting this done. But I would go with the one to go right to either the chief district judge or to the bankruptcy judge and hammer them out with them and surrender all the evidence to them. I told them to have the U.S. Marshals come and pick them up. I'll sign them over at that point in time. They should come to me. I shouldn't have to go to them. They're the servants. So when we put it down in writing and under our signature, then basically they have to comply. Because, see, this is all a item, a three-day 
Now they become the libel party at the end of three days. One of the guys got his stuff back from the Federal Reserve Bank within that three days. So basically the Federal Reserve Bank, where he was at, knew damn well that they wanted to clean their hands so that they weren't liable for what he did. With what we did last, just last week, uh, in sending those items out. I haven't heard anything back from mine, so I don't know what situation is on mine. But that's not stopped me. I'm still going to be hammering the hell out of these guys. And see, I know about these overseas bonds and everything because I uh, traded commodities. I played the big board out there. I traded bonds. I traded currencies. I traded soybeans, cattle futures. The same time Hillary was making her big killing that she didn't know anything about. I played penny stocks. I've tried to warn people how this burning match theory goes in the stock market. I've tried to explain to people how one outfit can turn around and destroy anybody. They destroyed the hunts, and that is the Federal Reserve. They have control over the trust accounts for the nation. They can have more money than anybody else out here. They can come in at the end of the day and basically take you in the opposite direction. And they've done that to me several times in currencies because there was not that many contracts being traded and basically they were able to manipulate the market the way they wanted it. And they took it right against me, and there was no way in hell I could get out until basically they let up. That's the game that they play. You want to play in that game? You better know all the rules and everything and be a hit and runner. Don't go for the grand slam. More games have been won by just a one base movement. driving the guy in from third base into home to win the game. So I just wanted to reiterate uh, what was going on here in the update of these items. Uh, I don't know whether Chris... Uh, was able to come on the call or not? Uh, I, I don't see him. Okay. Did he get those documents? Yeah, I sent them right away when I talked to you. Okay. But he wasn't he wasn't online at the time, but I put them in his Skype. Let's, let's see if uh, I can I'll keep see if he downloaded them. Yeah. You can check that on Skype. Yeah, I'm doing that. Uh, looks like it says file sent. Looks like he got it. Okay. And I sent it to Gary, too. Okay. Yeah, so, basically... I don't see if there's anything else. 
Uh, you just need to keep the pressure on them here, okay? And like any cord action you have or any uh, pills or anything like that you have, you surrender the preference and let the trustee make the payment. They're not going to make the payment until basically you surrender the preference. Well, those my shorts? No. Okay, questions? Scott, a uh, very small question, Patrick. I noticed on the uh, uh, things we're giving up right under the uh, Social Card form CINS, you have U.S. Co uh, collateral land, U.S. Postal Collateral Land Zone. Uh, that means we're giving up our zip code number? Well, for, yeah, for basically what uh, uh, they're using it for, yeah. Yeah. See, they're trying to put a claim against uh, that uh, uh, zip code, a claim against that land. Okay. So for the document for that, I can use any piece of mail that's been sent to me. Huh? And the document that I would have to surrender is any envelope of any piece of mail sent to me. Or do I even have to have a document? No, you just put the zip code down. Okay. With the five, with the nine digits. Right. See, it's the nine digits. Read what it says up there. Nine-digit registration account numbers used as fictitious secret charitable trust. Hmm. Okay, so, so that nine digit, the zip code plus the four digits, that is another nine digit registration number. Yeah. See, everything in their commercial banking system is a nine. Now, you flip it upside down, and yeah, you get a six. The mark of the beast, the six six sixes. That's the same thing that holds true with any EINs that we got. They're all in their system. They're all tendering lines holding that balloon tied down. You need to cut those lines and let the balloon. Go. And the, your last page facts here, we basically tailor that for each person we're going to be sending this to. And if you might need some modification to it. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Yeah, you need to think. Good. What am I doing? Okay? I can't think for you guys, okay? I'm okay. just trying to give you a guideline out here. Now, the rest is up to you. <clears throat> okay? You need to be feel comfortable with it, okay? You don't do anything until you feel comfortable until you can justify your actions. If you never get to that point, then don't do a damn thing. And you had better, when you start this, you had better get rid of everything because you hang on to one little iota. And basically, they will take you back down in some way or another. It's sort of like the Achilles heel hmm. that killed, uh, what's his name, Achilles. The arrow in the heel. 
that really wasn't what killed him, but basically that's what uh, everybody claims. Because when he was dunked into the River Six or Six or whatever it was, uh, his mother held him by the heel. So he did not get fully dunked, protected. He didn't get rid of that last little item. Okay, questions. So when I send in my utility bill, I send a, a surrendered copy of the certificate of live birth with it now. No. You surrender the preference that basically was coming with that. Preference being the bill itself? Hello? Okay, I like he bounced off. Yeah, it looks like he bounced off. Uh, did, didn't he say that the preference the preference was the uh, certificate of live birth earlier? I no, I thought, he, go back to the, I, I thought he was uh, talking to, I thought it was the bill myself. That's the uh, question I was going to pose, but you already posed it, so. Okay. And he, then he bounced, so. I mean, what other preference could it be? There he's come back. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Okay, you ask, do you send a copy of your certificate of live birth in with your utility bill? Hell no. The preference is the utility bill. It sells. Okay, makes sense. Well, then why did you ask the question? No, because I wasn't sure. And someone else said they were. I had it too. (laughs) Same question, preference. Well, you got to think about this stuff, people, logically. Come on. Well, I was thinking I didn't look at it. What is the preference for the item that you're dealing with? So, any particular vernacular on on the preference? We went over that last week. And you accept it, and then you basically surrender it back to them. I put those now, now, templates now, now, up there. Do you think it would be a, a, an option here to, like, uh, like uh, with, 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 you know, after you surrender it, surrender it? If you like, if you like, wrote wrote on the wrote, back, wrote and you want to get credited. Someone's got them. a speaker going. Oh, I've got a. Uh, got is, a it uh, is it me? Is it me? Well, I don't know. Somebody uh, basically it's when you're talking. So either you've got uh, your got computer or something. No, I'm on the phone headset. Is that better? Uh, you need to mute your computer speaker or something because there was feedback coming back in. I think I was too far away from the mic, but yeah, I'm in the gym right now. Sorry. The uh, uh, what I was going to ask is if if you put like some vernacular on the back, like to credit it back toward toward an account, so that you would get that type of credit since you're paying the debt and then, and acting as a creditor. I would I've tried that on a couple myself, but haven't heard anything back. I'm waiting on that response. Well, I put the nomenclature which I would put on there and it was for the trade acceptance. It's a trade acceptance. Got you you accept it on the one side and then basically you order the payment 
to be made over to them on the backside. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, you put out stuff so fast, Patrick, it's just hard to keep up with you. I don't know how where you get all the energy. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm really impressed. <laughs> Well, that's because I used to write procedures and everything else for nuclear power plants, and basically I was constantly going from one direction to another to try and keep uh, the things going. Were you in the uh, Navy? I was in the Navy and then in commercial uh, nuclear power. You went in the nuke field? Yep. I was headed that direction myself, Uh, but then I had a little detour. (laughs) But anyway, we won't have to go into that right now. Sydney, hold up. Jeez. Sorry, my dog. Got to get to a more quiet place here. All right. Well, I, yeah, like I said, I'm really impressed with your energy and your. If that's where it came from, maybe I missed out. I, that's why I should have taken that route. <laughs> yeah, but see, we've got. When when you sit down and go over this stuff, we've got them in constructive fraud. All these different government officials out here, especially like the attorney generals and uh, some of these other uh, minions out here, like like almost uh, two years ago or a year and a half ago or whatever, uh, basically my pickup was impounded and I kept uh, uh, trying to go through the court to uh, have them get it released back to me. Bill so Smith. They ended up turning around and uh, with the uh, outfit that was holding it, they ended up putting a uh, salvage title against it. They didn't have the certificate of title to the vehicle. But they turned around and used that uh, certificate title number and processed it through. So basically they did a grand theft of $20,900 against that certificate of title and then in turn gave a salvage title. They they probably do that every 45 days. Well, no. They did this at this point in time, okay? In most cases, it's going to be done, and that's why all these uh, uh, salvage yards, why the state requires the salvage yard to have that you have to give them a certificate or title when you bring the vehicle in to salvage the vehicle out. The salvage company doesn't know what's going on, but they might be getting a small little kickback out of a deal, but the state is turning around and confiscating that full value of that certificate or title into their charitable trust. They're probably in cahoots with all the different little tow companies. Yes, and they're operating as governmental constructive trustees, criminals, Hmm. in this constructive fraud, concealment. And I had a document up there before uh, with a bunch of terms on trust. One was trust in interventum. You might look that one up. I don't know whether any of these damn uh, government or uh, enforcement agencies like the FBI, the CID, or the Interpol will come through 
in this or whether they've all had their wings clipped. If they've had their wings clipped, we know they're devils because devils don't have wings. And they're surrogates now being controlled by the banking corporations and they're classified as enemies to America. And as they are surrogates, they need to be unplugged from the government of America because they're a nuisance. And the only way that we can get noticed is basically to stand our ground and shout at the top of our voice. Make ourselves heard. And the more people that start shouting this, then there might be some people that start waking up and the numbers might start increasing. I'm telling you, man, you can tell a lot of people that they just shrug you off a lot of times. It's like they want what? to get stuck in. I said, you tell people this stuff sometimes, and they just shrug you off, and they're just stuck in, in stupid, if you will. So they're it's difficult to get them pulled out. Yeah, they're well, tell be- them to go check these things out, Okay. I'm I'm doing my part more and more every day. So, yeah, as I as I see the benefit. But it all it takes is one thing. You go in and get one of those utility bills settled, and say, hey, look here, I settled my damn utility bill without giving any dollars out of my back pocket. Here's how I did it. You keep a copy. You skip when you do this. You always scan a copy of what you send back. I usually just take a picture. Yeah, but that's the same thing. It's best to scan it on uh, your printer to do a scan of it, and then you've got a PDF file of it. Well, the same way as the picture. It works the same. I use a scan. Yeah, but a picture takes takes up more memory. Well, yeah, but you have to use like a scanning... uh, program or whatever, or application. Well, your, most most printers uh, have that capability now, okay? Well, I've got an old school one. <laughs> well, then just print out a copy of it. Hang on to an extra copy. For your records, you always maintain a copy of what you sent out. Yes. The say you have a municipality that uh, is saying, she goes, just for instance, you sent me the bill, but you didn't have a payment with it, and I haven't got back with her yet because I got to make sure that I'm not in an agitated mode to talk to her. Well, you need to go in and look at what I put up on the site there with those four different scenarios of doing the trade acceptance. It's the same thing as a bank acceptance. These are all banking transactions or trade acceptances in this process. You accept it and then you, on the back side, you sign it over to them. That is a receipt. Yeah. That is a bill that they're giving you. Yes. You give the bill back to them. It's like they give you a dollar bill in the mail. So it's a bill of exchange. Yes, and you send it back to them because it's a debt bill. So you give the debt back to them. So in that, when it's when it sent back, it's the credit? They have, see, they owe, they have, 
All corporations out here, everything is a corporation. They have a nine-digit number, too. So anything that's got a nine-digit number is a corporation. Now, a corporation has to zero its books at the end of the year. Every year, they have to zero their books. Any profits that they have, they have to hand it over to the shareholders, and their books have to go to zero. They might be able to carry some funds over for new construction, but they can't carry it over for operation. That's the law. Now, how do they get the money to start up the next year? They go to the treasury to we the people's treasury and borrow the money. Now, they have to pay that money back. Now, they send you a bill. You are getting the service. You send it back to them saying, I got the service. They turn around and say, okay, I don't have to pay this much back to the treasury because I gave that much service to this individual American over here. Okay, that's just their way of processing it. That's, that's a good explanation. That is the only way of processing it. Gotcha. That makes a lot more sense. I've tried to state that for about the last five years, ever since I was talking about the 1099-As back in 2009. But see, we, as the living, we do not do the 1099s. So the, uh, Who does them? The dead. The Federal Reserve Banks do them. The fiscal agents do them. When they set off and cancel the debt that is owed back to the Treasury. That's why we never saw any 1099As, Bs, or Cs, and we kept looking for them, saying, hey, I never got my 1099A or my 1099B for this transaction because it's not going to come to us. Those are for the fictions, the fictitious corporations, not for the creditor. The true creditor or the beneficiary in what there's out here so we we have to surrender this so that we get what they are classifying as a benefit. It's really not a benefit. It's really our shit. We're just coming in now as the creditor when we surrender this stuff, and we're getting our lawful credits. So should those, should those be credited to the straw man, all caps, corporation? No, it's going to be coming back to us. The credit goes to the living. We're going to surrender the fiction. Yeah. You're surrendering okay. the fiction. You're surrendering the you fiction. You surrender. Back. You get rid of that cocksucker. <laughs> okay? That's what you have to do is surrender the preferences. He is one of the preferences on that item. You have to get rid of that fiction. Fictitious person. You don't need him. Okay, any other questions out there? Looks like not, Patrick. Okay. 
So very good. That just seems very clear to me now. Thank you. Okay. And I'll get this recording up on the group site, there and we'll talk later. Yes, it's very good recording. Okay. I'll see you. Take care. Sure. Bye. Bye. Yeah, Patrick, I'll give you a call tomorrow after court. I have court tomorrow. Okay.